2020 has started, I have not introduced you guys to a new reptile or amphibian of mine with the exception of my wife's tree frog, Alfredo. So despite me not introducing some new pets to you guys over this past year, I do actually have quite a few new animals that are due for an introduction, I guess. So most of the animals that I'm going to be introducing you guys to in this video today are actually animals that I've had for quite some time now. Most of them I've had for at least a few months. So the reason I haven't introduced them sooner is just because this past year I wasn't really uploading on YouTube super consistently, especially in the first half of the year. I was dealing with a lot of mental health related issues and because of that I also had a lot of anxiety surrounding the idea of introducing a new animal. However, I'm here now, I am feeling good today and I am excited to introduce you all to my new animals that I got over this past year. So the first animal that I would like to introduce you guys to is this little girl right here. And now I say girl, I'm not 100% positive yet, but thinking girl, uh, and her name is Moira. So Moira right here is a carpet chameleon. And now if any of you are familiar with me and my channel, you may know that I used to have a carpet chameleon named George. I'm not going to tell the full story because there is a whole video explaining that, but basically with George, I had a very, very difficult situation where he became ill. I took him to the vet. The vet misdiagnosed and mistreated him for months to the point where the treatment actually made his disease worse. There was a whole situation where they amputated his tail without my consent and everything. I do want to say I did go to a lawyer, but yeah, I'm not going to get into that whole story here because yeah, I have a, I'll link the video somewhere if you do want to watch it, but unfortunately I did have a very sad story with George. After losing George, I did know that I wanted to get a new carpet chameleon at some point, but I honestly just did not know when I was ready for a long time. I couldn't even think about George without getting really sad and angry, so it did take me a little while before I felt ready for a new carpet chameleon, but then Moira was actually like a birthday gift to myself basically this year. So Moira is a captive bred baby carpet chameleon and I got her at the end of August. She was a lot smaller than she is now when I first got her. She's grown so, so much. And I've also worked really hard with Moira since having her to build a good relationship with her. Chameleons aren't always the easiest animals to build trust with, but when you get something like a baby captive bred chameleon, it gives you a lot of opportunity to work with them as they grow and allow them to trust you. So as I mentioned, Moira is really small. Carpet chameleons in general are a small species. My previous carpet chameleon, George, weighed 13 grams as an adult, so they really don't get that large. However, they still definitely will get bigger than this. So since Moira isn't done growing yet, I'm currently in the process of building her her adult enclosure and it's coming along so well so far. Uh, let's go and take a look at that. So this here is the enclosure that I'm working on for Moira. It's obviously not done. I still need to do a lot of work on it. I am really liking how it's coming along so far and I think that it'll be a really awesome enclosure for her. So yeah, that enclosure is going to be set up for Moira really soon and I'm super excited. Moira has been so incredible to own in the time I've had her. Carpet chameleons are definitely one of my favorite species of chameleon. So I'm so, so happy to have another carpet chameleon in my life. I do miss George a ton, but I'm just so excited to get to continue to raise her and build trust with her. And yeah, I'm just so excited to get to care for her. She's such a special little girl and I'm really, really happy that I have her. So now the next animal that I want to introduce you to is another really, really tiny lizard. Look at her. So I'm not going to keep her out for too long because she is still quite flighty and a little bit jumpy. So I don't want to stress her out too much or anything. But this here is Venus, who is my female Eurydactylodes velardi or chameleon gecko. So as I mentioned, I am just going to put her back quickly because she is a little bit jumpy and it is hard to monitor a jumpy gecko and also film at the same time. There, so I'll go and give you guys a little look at her before I put her back. Here she is. 
very cute. This is Venus. She's a very good girl. And now we will go and put her back in her enclosure. So in my previous video, I mentioned um, how I had an eighth gecko who I was feeding Pangea to, and I wanted you guys to guess what it was. Now, there were a lot of really good guesses. However, I don't think anyone guessed a chameleon gecko. So uh, surprise, the animal that I was talking about in my last video is Venus. So some of you may know that I already had a male chameleon gecko named Pluto. This is him right here. So now I have two. I have Pluto and I have Venus. So even though we're talking about Venus, I'm just going to keep Pluto out anyways because he's a lot um, more used to me, he's a lot calmer, so he can hang out and chill here while we talk about them. So I got Venus a few months ago. She was actually bred by uh, Breeze Exotic, some of you may know her, and I just have to say I love this species of gecko so much. I think that they are super, super, super underrated. I would definitely like to do a whole video talking about that and just like why I like them so much and why I think they're so underrated because they just really, truly are. I think they're such an amazing species and they're so fun to own and they're just so cute. I loved having Pluto to care for and I'm even more excited now that I also have Venus to care for. So yeah, there is Venus, even though this is Pluto but I did get a new chameleon gecko. Now it's time for frogs. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I did already introduce you guys to Alfredo, my white tree frog, a little while back, but I thought that I'd just mention him again in this video anyways because I did get him in this past year. So these two enclosures that you see right next to me, you can even see Alfredo right there, these house the new frogs that I got. So right here we have Alfredo, who is my white tree frog. Right now he is the only one in the enclosure, however, I am planning on getting a second white tree frog here pretty soon and they won't be able to live together right away because the new one I'm getting is a baby so I'll have to make sure this baby um you know gets big first before I put him in with Alfredo but eventually I will have two white tree frogs in this enclosure but for now it is just Alfredo. Then in the other enclosure that we see right here, this is where I keep my Vietnamese mossy frogs. One thing I just like briefly want to mention is this enclosure does have um, a big water section in the back. Mossy frogs compared to other tree frogs and stuff like to spend a lot more time in the water so some sort of like semi-aquatic setup is best for them. Whereas Alfredo, my wife's tree frog, he just has a small water dish large enough for him to sit in but my Vietnamese mossy frogs have a lot more water than he does. So both my wife's tree frogs and my mossy frogs were basically just rehomes from Kijiji. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Kijiji is basically just the Canadian version of Craigslist. It's a buy and sell site and people often put animals on there for rehoming. So towards the end of 2019, I decided that I would like to get um, some species of frogs in the new year and uh, get some enclosures set up for them. So I got these enclosures and started foaming the backgrounds and stuff even before I had my frogs just because I knew that I was wanting frogs. And since I was wanting frogs, I was keeping an eye on Kijiji for frogs that were being rehomed. So I definitely could have gotten some frogs from a breeder or something. However, I was not in any rush for them. So instead, I just decided to keep checking Kijiji and see what um, became available for rehoming. And that's how I ended up with frogs. Funny enough, both of the people who I bought these frogs from actually ended up recognizing me from my YouTube channel when I went to pick them up. So if any of you guys are watching, hello, the frogs are doing really good here. I do want to say my mossy frogs don't have names yet. So if you want to leave name suggestions for them, feel free to do that in the comments down below. So now the last animal that I would like to introduce you all to are my Oida salamanders. So these are most likely a species that not many people have heard of because they are not at all common in the pet trade and I'm honestly very surprised that I happened to end up with them. So let's talk about how I ended up with my Oida salamanders. This honestly goes back very, very far. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with collecting animals outside where I lived in Nova Scotia. There isn't a whole lot of reptiles, you know, there's a few turtles and a couple snakes, but there's no lizards or anything. So the main animals that I would find as a child were salamanders. Those are everywhere, just little like red line salamanders there all over the place and frogs. I caught a lot of frogs when I was a kid. 
So as a child, I was super interested in amphibians, but I think salamanders were definitely one of my favorites. I used to go to the park with my family and I would like get my grandfather to turn over every single rock that we found and I would find like three salamanders underneath of it and I would catch them. I would only keep them for like a little bit looking at them in a container and then I would let them go again. But anyways, I love salamanders. I have basically wanted to own salamanders for as long as I've been on YouTube. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it before. And I have tried for a very long time to find a salamander that could be my pet. The thing is, salamanders are very, very, very hard to come by in Canada. I don't know all the exact reasons, but there's some like laws surrounding them, um, all that stuff. And yeah, basically salamanders are just really, really hard to come by in Canada. So I've basically been keeping my eyes peeled for salamanders for like two or three years now. And finally, earlier this year, I happened to find some on Kijiji. Again, they were being rehomed and they were these Oida salamanders. So the guy who was re homing them was actually a big big salamander breeder here in Canada from what he told me he's actually bred a lot of salamanders that are in zoos and he was basically just getting out of the hobby so he was selling his oida salamanders so the original plan was actually to get three babies from him so I went and I met up with him and he brought the three babies that I was supposed to get but then he also brought three adults basically just so I could kind of see what the adults look like so once we meet up we got talking and he was pretty impressed with my knowledge on the salamanders and he basically just said you seem like you would be a really good home if you want all of them you can have them and that is how I ended up with six salamanders so I was only supposed to get three but then I ended up with three babies and three adults and I honestly couldn't be happier especially that I got the adults because the adults are so so funny I love them so much I'm so happy I have them I definitely need to do a video dedicated to these salamanders because they are just like the goofiest animal that I own and I love them so much. The babies are a lot more shy and timid but I'm hoping as they continue to grow they'll uh, become more like the adults. So the adults that I have are six years old now and they are also captive bred by the guy I got them from and the babies you know are a lot younger and also still captive bred so it's really cool. I have like six captive bred oida salamanders now so I'm so happy about that and I definitely need to do a video dedicated to them because they are absolutely fantastic animals. So I just picked her up and she's so cute. I'm so excited to get her home and get her in a setup. She will be going into a quarantine setup for now, but I'm really, really excited to be able to create like a nice naturalistic or bioactive enclosure for her. So uh, yeah, there, there she is right now. All right, so I am pretty sure that is all the animals that I had to introduce you guys to. So I think I'm just gonna end the video here. I really, really do hope that you enjoyed meeting all these new animals and I really hope that you guys are looking forward to more videos with them because I definitely need to do that. I, you know, I, I can't not. I need to do more videos with these animals. So hopefully you guys are excited for those. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking or I'm just going to ramble forever. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also be sure to check out all of my social media. That will just be in the description down below, but I would love to have you guys over there. So uh, please be sure to check that out. With all of that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. And I hope to see you all in my next video.